Hello, my name is Richard and on behalf of the Pioneer UK core team, I want to welcome you to this Pioneer Sunday. We've just finished our Pioneer Annual Leaders Conference and today is all about celebrating our connection and partnership as churches across the UK. Pioneer exists to take the gospel into new places and spaces. We're a relational network that connects, inspires and equips churches to make spirit-filled disciples and see kingdom transformation in creative and innovative ways across geography and generations. We'll be hearing from Billy Kennedy, who is our Pioneer International Leader, as well as Ness Wilson, who is our Pioneer UK Leader. But first, here's a spoken word piece written and performed by Richard Ward from Bless Community Church in our London region. This life is a wonder. I dedicate my life to explore beyond yonder. Life is a wonder. Cities upon cities, I dedicate my life to explore. Over hillsides, through valleys. Life is a wonder. I dedicate my life to explore township and districts, to ask questions, not allow expressions dictate my opinions about people and tribes. Life is a wonder. To look over horizons beyond boundaries, not be held back. Life is a wonder. And I'm a dedicated explorer. Over roads and tracks, I circle back and back, moving forwards towards their embrace. Life is a wonder. Over tundra, through tunnels, I am funnelled as I see expressions causing questions. Life is a wonder. I'm a dedicated explorer. Life is a wonder. To let eyes focus on creation to creator, the deep image within. To be an explorer, a drawer of life. Overcome strife, change gear and drive beyond boundaries outside your counties. Set feet on new land, put hope in a clan, letting hands span across divides. And let your stride make a difference as your God crystallises towards a great finish. A beginnings and beginning of life is a wonder. Will you be a dedicated explorer? Cities upon cities, tracks and valleys, roads to and fro, travel beyond yonder. Be the responder to lead the great life, full, founded in wonder. Life is a wonder. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, one of the more positive developments uh, of lockdown uh, is this Pioneer Sunday, uh, an opportunity for Pioneer churches and partners uh, to come together, to, sh to share together, to hear the same message and, and to reinforce our collective mission. Now, three years ago or so, I, I took on the role of the P Pioneer International uh, Leader. Um, I was able to travel to quite a few nations um, in that first nine to 12 months, but then lockdown happened and, and uh, travel was curtailed. So like everyone else, we jumped on Zoom, we set up a variety of WhatsApp groups, and we tried our best to, to keep connected. Now, what has been uh, amazing is is not only being able to maintain existing connections, but, but in seeing new relationships form and new networks emerge during this time. Now, last month in February, I traveled to Zambia for the launch of Pioneer Zambia. Um, I thought you'd be interested uh, to hear directly uh, from the new leader of this network. So here we are at the launch of Pioneer in Zambia and this is Stephen Mawakabinga who is the new national leader. Stephen, tell me what, why Pioneer? What is it about Pioneer that sort of has, has attracted you? My friend, my friend, uh, yeah, I think uh, it, it's such a blessing. Uh, I stand here with my friend, although the journey has been a little bit um, longer working with Pioneer. But uh, in a summary, is that um, I think the issue of relational, uh, finding uh, the issue of um, uh, Pioneer being 
a bigger family, number one, a place where we can find a place of relating with many other great, strong, and mature uh, leaders who can have um, uh, an input in what we are doing and also us standing together with them. But also sometimes a place of accountability. I think for me and for us, that's an important thing. This has not started today from um, a long time uh, when I was, um, um, I came to, to contact uh, Paonia. It started with a friend of mine first, who just, uh, I don't know how he knew about it, he mentioned Paonia, but from that time, for me, it is stuck in me. That was around 1998. So from that time, I was, long, long journey. Long yeah, journey, yeah. I was in touch with Gerard Coates and uh, communicating with Gerard Coates for some time until at some point communication broke down. But however, Gerard, uh, the office which was then, I think if I remember where it was Guilford in, in, um, in, in Surrey, yeah, yeah, I remember that, very well that, yeah, at that yeah. time, they used to send me over literature and which kept me in contact uh, regularly for a number of years until after some years um, my heart was still uh, longing for this until the next time when I tried to connect with Paulia the next person who <laughs> who responded to me was Bill Come on, here we go. and uh, from that time Billy started working with me and through me and uh, having meetings regularly between me and Billy, having fellowship together. Now it's almost about three, four years. Yeah. And he sent, he sent, he sent Richard Anis and his son Luke, who yeah. came over just to come and have time with me, sat down and meet the, our leaders and um, have, we had a conference uh, in Kitwe with church leaders. And now it has taken three, four years since Richard left. And now, um, uh, here we are. Here Pioneer, we are. Pioneer Zambia. Zambia. So yesterday, <laughs> it was a great day. We launched officially a Pioneer. And I'm Amen. so glad. And right now, we are in another place in Mofulira with a friend of mine, Innocent. And Pioneer now is moving. We are grateful. But may I thank Billy for the heart he has really uh, shown to, to walk us through all these things thank you billy and thank you paunia for coming us god bless you so so this is the pattern that i i'm seeing everywhere uh, church leaders who are looking for authentic relationship looking for family for a place of accountability and uh, and support now many of these churches across the nations are independent churches without support but others have been part of more mainstream traditional denominations but again without support uh, and what pioneer has been modeling for for over 40 years now is a is the very thing that these leaders are looking for a relational network humble servant leadership that is not hierarchical where women are respected uh, empowered and released into leadership where churches prioritize the presence of God that have a, a kingdom orientation not looking to build an empire but are catalysts for church unity the values that we espouse now, now as we all know operating relationally has its challenges relationships break down people get hurt get offended it's it can be emotionally draining on days life is complex it can be it can be tiring but i am convinced it is the way we should be doing church uh, on days I, I can be tempted to focus on structure and models and hierarchy but my faith is renewed when I meet people uh, like Stephen and, and like Innocent, who was also in the video, who have seen something in us and want to replicate that in their nation. You know, there are now networks forming in uh, Australia and New Zealand, in India, Sri Lanka, N Nepal and Pakistan, in Kenya, 
Tanzania, Zambia, Ghana, Liberia, Guinea and Sierra Leone, in Cyprus, in Cuba and in the USA. And so I want to thank you all for the journeys that you have been on, for the way that you have modelled church as community, for the sacrifices that you have made, the seeds that you have sown, the example that you have set. I I know many of you carry the scars. You've paid a price. But as Paul the Apostle encouraged uh, us in Galatians chapter 6, let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. I hope and pray that in these next few years you will be encouraged as you see the seeds that have been sown bearing fruit in your towns and your cities and across the nations. Uh, Thank you again uh, for your continued support. May God richly bless each one of you. For the church to continue making and sending disciples, to bring the gospel to their world, we must heavily invest into training and raising up new church leaders. Our Pioneer Pathway program has been a great success so far, with 20 people currently being trained and developed in their leadership calling across our churches. A further 15 have taken part in standalone training modules over the last 15 months. Here's our Pioneer Pathway program director, Josh Bloor. As Pioneer, it's so vital that we are continually providing a place for growing and equipping leaders. And because quite often most of us are very busy, it's also important that this leadership training is both flexible and accessible. And this is exactly what Pioneer Pathway offers. But please don't just take my word for it, but have a listen to what some of the current participants had to say. We've got two years of eight modules and I've loved getting to grips with all the content uh, of each of those modules. But best of all for me, I've loved meeting up with different people from all over the country, from pioneer churches. And it's been great getting to getting used to talking with them and meeting up with them and just enjoying their company uh, as we've done this course online. It's been brilliant. I've really enjoyed the opportunity to be challenged and grown in a number of different areas of leadership and the giftings around that, whilst doing so in a group of people who come from all sorts of life experience and backgrounds, so that just brings out so much more in our discussion times. The thing I've enjoyed most about Pathway so far has got to be the connecting with other people who are on a leadership journey together and having the opportunity to hear from such a wide range of different leaders and experts in um, topics that I haven't necessarily given time and space to and to really dedicate that time to I guess invest in my leadership journey Um, that's been great. One of the things that I've enjoyed most about Pioneer Pathways so far has been connecting with lots of other leaders from across the Pioneer Network and learning how I can apply what I'm learning about Jesus and theology into my local community within the roles I have as a young leader. I have enjoyed stopping and thinking and having time to do both of those things to really be intentional about my leadership. And also, there's amazing people that do Pathway with you, which you get to know and make friends with. Um, I've absolutely loved just how varied Pathway is um, with all the different topics that we cover. Yeah, I've really loved being able to hear different tutors speak that I wouldn't normally get to hear, so great to have some diverse teaching across the course. The module that has challenged me the most has been the theology module. Now I thought I knew quite a bit about scripture, I read it a lot, but I tell you some of the topics that we've been given to discuss, to read around, to watch videos and stuff, and then to discuss what we think about those topics, it's been mind blowing. It's really been challenging, it's really been terrific, and I think you should do it. Pathway has helped me grow as a leader by giving me a lot of time and resources to explore a wide variety of topics about faith and church, whether it's considering how to church plant or weighing up different 
theological constructs and each week we get some really great input from a variety of speakers who speak into those topics. I think Pioneer Pathway has helped me grow as a leader by giving me the opportunity to delve deeper, I guess, particularly in the Emotionally Healthy Spirituality module, which is the first one that I've done, um, into some of the structures and rhythms and routines of life that enable you to do sustainable leadership. Um, and it's such a privilege to learn from people who've been doing it a much longer time than me. Pathways has helped me to grow as a leader by recognising my areas of strength and weakness and learning how to be equipped in my local area of community and excel in what God has called me to. I'd say for me, Pathway has helped me grow because it's forced me or pushed me to use certain muscles of leadership that I've maybe put off or don't like using but actually encouraging me to explore those areas of leadership and to give me confidence in them really. Uh, I feel that my confidence has certainly grown, especially in theological subjects that at the beginning of Pathway didn't even know what the words meant. So I've learned a lot in that way. And then I think for me it's um it's helped me to, to grow in like a deeper understanding of what it is to be a leader um, and also a deeper understanding of how church life works and what it means to work in a church but also as a leader just in being a Christian leader in general, how to lead well um, and like Jesus did and following his example. I don't think it matters what age you are uh, to do Pioneer Pathways. I think it's a really good course and I think there's always room to learn, to grow, to find out more about yourself and to find out about others. You should sign up to Pathway because it's not only an investment into yourself as a leader, but also into yourself as a disciple of Christ. Um, you'll find yourself coming out of the other end of the course as someone who can walk the narrow path with anyone who might come under your leadership into your community. Um, so yeah, it's a great course. Uh, I think others should sign up to Pioneer Pathway because it is a really fantastic opportunity to meet with other people, to go deeper, to dedicate time to your own growth and learning and investment um, and to really embed yourself in the Pioneer Network, um, which is just fantastic and such a privilege. Um, so go for it, do it. I'd really encourage other people to sign up to Pioneer Pathways if they want to learn more about who God is, theology and how to be better equipped as a leader in your own community. Also, it is a great way to make friends with other young leaders across the Pioneer Network. So I think others should sign up because it's a really good way to get um, a broad view of church leadership and different skills that you can gain along the way in different topics and modules as you go on um, without having the obligation of having to pick a degree and go to Bible college. Yeah and for me I think um, the reason I signed up is because I'm still, still trying to figure out what the future looks like, um, exploring kind of different areas of leadership and church life and this course kind of offers everything in that. It's not tied down to one degree that I'm studying, it's actually just helping me explore what the future holds and what God's got in store for me. So it's really great for you if um, you're in the same position. Uh, Pathway has been great for me because it's affirmed all the good stuff in me. So you should do it too. <laughs> and also our course director, Josh, is a real hoot too. So you want to sign up for his uh, jokes uh, as much as anything else. Thank you so much, guys. To find out everything about Pioneer Pathway, you can go to our website. It's www.pioneer.org.uk forward slash Pioneer Pathway. If you prefer to maybe arrange a Zoom call or you just want to chat with someone directly, you can email us at pathway at pioneer.org.uk. Thank you so much for listening and God bless. Through collaboration and partnership, as well as training, mentoring and leadership support, Pioneer seeks to champion local churches in their ministry and mission. Many of you give regularly to support us in this work and we want to take this opportunity to say thank you. We call our regular contributors our everyday pioneers and we are grateful for every single one of you. If you'd like to partner with us in this incredible mission to raise up thriving church communities as witnesses to God's kingdom, then you can visit www.pioneer.org.uk forward slash donate and select Everyday Pioneer 
from the drop down menu. Your church leaders have kindly agreed to include an offering towards our work as Pioneer as part of your meeting today. Just like last year, 50% of our offering will be allocated to the work of Pioneer International in some of the poorest countries in the world. We remember Paul's words to the church in Corinth in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verses 10 to 14. Last year, you were the first not only to give, but also to have the desire to do so. Now, finish the work so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it, according to your means. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Our desire is not that others might be relieved while you are hard pressed, but there might be equality. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need, so that in turn, their plenty will supply what you need. The goal is equality. Uh, the, other, the other half of our offering will be used to subsidise our leadership training programmes here in the UK. The startup funding that we received from a friend to relaunch Pioneer Pathway comes to an end in August. Now, this funding allowed us to make the course very affordable and accessible, and we would love to continue to do that. This investment into leaders is the single most effective way to see our churches and future church plants thrive. Please give as generously as you can to this offering by visiting www.pioneer.org.uk forward slash donate and selecting Pioneer Sunday from the drop down menu. Now, just before we hear from Ness, let's read together from scripture, from Philippians chapter one. I'm gonna read Philippians chapter one, verses three to 11, and verses 27 to 30. And I'm reading from the NIV translation. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you since I have you in my heart and whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best, and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. 
and from verse 27. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then, whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in the one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved, and that by God. For it has been granted to you on, be Christ, on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him, since you're going through the same struggle you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. Well, it's wonderful, isn't it, to hear from Billy and to see the favour of God on Pioneer internationally. And that what we do instinctively as Pioneer is what others want. And, you know, I think it's because we are both real, we're authentic, we're relational, we're fun, we're kind of normal, and yet we're also deeply passionate for Jesus. We're radical, we're spirit-filled, we're prophetic, and at times disruptive and challenging of the status quo. And that's what people are looking for a network that is humbly confident in their distinctives. We're not a hierarchy of power structures or a denomination with traditions that need to be maintained. We are a relational network that exists to take the gospel into new spaces and places. And we do that by simply connecting with each other, inspiring and equipping churches to make spirit-filled disciples and see kingdom transformation in all kinds of creative and innovative ways across geography and across generations. We, quite simply, we pioneer. And one of the fascinating developments of what God has been doing with his church over the last two years is that church is no longer a set menu, one place, one time, one format, it is now much more of a buffet as we have created and we've innovated with new expressions so that church communities are now gathering in homes and libraries, allotments, football clubs, schools, and of course, online. And you know, this innovation is particularly true of pioneer churches because we have a possibility mindset and we have a natural leaning towards creative thinking. I have loved hearing about pioneer churches pioneering and living up to our name over the past two years, even amongst all of the challenges and all of the struggles of COVID and multiple lockdowns. So within our network, we have seen the Gather Collective down in Eastbourne express the kingdom of God through the Gather Community Garden, a collection of seven plots on an allotment with activities six days a week, including growing fruit and veg, keeping two beehives, 21 chickens, a quiet garden based on Psalm 23 and a prayer room. And that's pioneering. And I guess allotment church is probably one of the few expressions of church that could carry on in person when most others were solely online. Or going over to Northern Ireland, City Church Belfast were able to keep their cafe and bakery open during the lockdowns and provided takeaways in their community garden around the building with pizza, psalms and poetry evenings for people to connect into. City Church Belfast also used the ground floor of their building to be the distribution hub for the busiest food bank in the whole of Northern Ireland. Or over in rural Wales, Lighthouse Church Anglesey, only planted a few years ago, responded to the needs of their island by launching Make Lunch Takeout, where they delivered over a thousand home-cooked meals to over 200 low-income families across the island, accelerating connection and friendships in a way that probably nothing else would have done. And so it meant that in the summer, they had over 250 people attend their first in-person Make Lunch Fun Day. And then up in the north, Huddersfield Community Church have been working very closely with the local council during COVID and have actively created a network of groups and charities and services. They are now co-running 15 groups where they create a place to belong for people from many different journeys and backgrounds, including addicts, the isolated, those with learning difficulties, those with physical challenges, vulnerable adults, and those with mental health challenges. They have an emergency phone line, and they are now gathering calls and referrals for help through a network of volunteers in the community. They now distribute food, 
clothes, bedding, furniture, baby equipment, shoes, coats, and white goods. They perform garden clearouts, support trips to medical appointments, and are finding they are now having frequent requests for help from immigrant families and from those fleeing domestic violence. They have become an amazing lifeline for their community over the last two years. And French Community Church in the West Midlands. Now, they would be one of the smaller churches in our network, but that hasn't stopped them having an influence way beyond their size. I would say that's one of our distinctives as Pioneer. You know, before the pandemic, that church food bank delivered 100 to 125 boxes a month. And over the last two years, that has quadrupled. They now deliver that same amount every single week with much more collaboration with local residents and community groups and the local supermarkets. And with all that growth, they've had to rebrand from French Food Bank to the Wire Forest Food Bank to show the scope of how far the deliveries are now being made. New Community Southampton continues to impact their city and run Hope Community School as does New Gen Church in Sidcup continues to run their Hope Community School and run the local library. Blessed Church in Ealing have seen many more joining them from different ethnicities and backgrounds. Dr. Deo have massively pioneered with their church leader, Yanni, winning the case to bring greater protection for children from online pornography, forcing pornography websites to prevent underage access by using age verification technologies. And that will bring light into a great darkness that traps so many of our young people in society. Paul Pickhaver heads up City Changes Projects, which is working with local authorities and different initiatives, releasing thousands upon thousands of pounds into making considerable impact in the local communities around Surbiton. King's Church, Withenshaw, have begun an Eden project with the Message Trust. You know, that is a great organisation to partner with if you are wanting to plant onto an estate. Burton Community Church in the Midlands brought an old church building a few years ago. And then the carpet shop opposite, which used to be a new age of witchcraft shop, came up for lease and they went for it. And over the last couple of years, they've used it to run their kids and their youth work, youth drop-in and food bank. And then once COVID hit, the betting shop next door shut down and they began to dream. However, the rent was really high and they needed a miracle. And within a week, someone approached them and said they felt God was telling them to give a certain amount for the betting shop. And that amount equaled two years rent. And then a few weeks ago, Burton Community Church got the keys to that betting shop. And then just recently, a building company has given them a kitchen which has just been delivered. You know, God is on the move. There is favour on Pioneer. And it's been so encouraging to me that in the midst of the reality that we find ourselves in, in the challenges, the opportunities, the struggles, the cumulative depletion of the last two years, we have kept on pioneering. And I sense too that as fresh energy comes over the coming months, as we get replenished again with our connection to community, with able to worship, with gatherings and conferences where we can hear the stories of what God is doing and we begin to imagine what is possible, there will be ignition moments for us all over again where we realize we have to take responsibility. We have to remember who we are as pioneer. We have to live up to our name and explore this new post-pandemic landscape together. And so as we go from a set menu of what church looks like to a buffet of creative and innovative expressions, there is room again for us to dream, to create, to experiment, and to take the gospel into new spaces and places. Many of you know the tough season that I've been in personally, and I'm going gently through this journey of grieving Lauren. But, you know, it has deepened my conviction even more that what I want to do with the rest of my life is to share the gospel and only build things of eternal value because the only thing we can take with us into eternity is people, beautiful, irreplaceable people. So who has God put on your heart? Which networks or neighborhoods of people? How can you bring more kingdom transformation into the lives of those people? What would it take for you? to take the gospel into those spaces and places. 
and it has to be in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the reality of some of our brokenness, in the story we find ourselves in, that we honour Jesus and we do what he's put us on the earth to do. And we know that pioneering takes courage. We know it takes training and it takes support. So we've invested a lot into Pioneer Pathway. We want to continue to do so. Part of our offering will go into training more leaders. Our regions are also a strong vehicle of more local training, connection and support. And you know, at the leaders conference that we've just had over the weekend, we formally launched our fifth region, Pioneer East, led by Graham Blake, who leads the brilliant church in Hope Church in Dis, Norfolk. And Graham has got great relationships with leaders of uh, churches locally. And even recently, a church planting team has just approached him for relationship and support. And as a UK core team, we recognize a clear apostolic call on his life. We see the life of God at work in that whole area, in that region. So now is the right time to launch Pioneer East, sensing as we have commissioned it as a new region that will catalyze even more connections, conversations and opportunities for churches and church plants to find a home with a relational apostolic network. That's exciting. And it's again a sign of growth and God's favor on us as Pioneer. So... Let's keep pioneering. Let's keep listening to Jesus. And let's take the gospel into these new spaces and places of the post-pandemic landscape we are in. I'm so looking forward to hearing more stories of courage, of perseverance, and of significant kingdom impact. Pioneer churches, you are amazing. Well, amen. Let's pray together. Father, we just want to thank you for so many inspiring examples, stories, testimonies of what you're doing through your church. We thank you for our pioneer family. We thank you that you've brought us together to learn from one another, to inspire one another, to encourage one another and provoke one another. Lord God, help us to take hold of something of what we've heard, what we've learned today, what we've been talking about together and Lord, help us to run with that. Help us to, to do more, Lord God. Fill us again with your spirit, we pray, Lord God. Would you pour out your spirit on all of us across all of our pioneer churches, Lord God. Of course, we pray for the whole church of Jesus Christ. We pray especially for one another in this pioneer family. We pray, Lord God, pour out your spirit afresh. Commission us afresh. Send us again, Lord God, into our villages, towns and cities. Because, Lord, we want to faithfully live out and proclaim your gospel. We, we want men, women and children everywhere to hear the good news of Jesus Christ, of who you are, of your incredible love and of the incredible difference that you are making in our lives and in our world. So, Lord God, we're praying, let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Pour out your spirit afresh and enable us to be your ambassadors to represent you and your gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really are, as a network, all about championing you, encouraging you, resourcing you. So we're praying God's blessing on you as a church. We're praying that you'll be successful in your mission as witnesses to God's kim kingdom. And we will continue doing all we can to support and encourage you. God bless you and thanks again. <laughs>